Hi everyone, David Millington here. I'm the C++ Builder Product Manager here at Embarcadero and I'm going to give a lightning talk on using Delphi containers from C++. One of the amazing things about Red Studio is that you can use both Delphi and C++ code in the one uh, project. And that means you're in the one final compile DXE or DLL or something as well. And so we have a, a lot of bridging there and, and we support a lot of uh, compiler extensions and, and that kind of thing through a lot of compiler magic. We also have a lot of code in, in system and other related areas as well that, that helps makes the, uh, the two quite different languages be, be more compatible. But this particular talk is going to focus on containers. So containers are fundamental to programming, but the Delphi style containers like tlist or tstringlist or the items in system.generics.collections are quite different to C++'s. They perform the same function, but being written in a different language uh, they are designed very differently. So Delphi, for example, uses uh, the index operator and count uh, quite a lot, as well as ienumerable, so you can enumerate over uh, the contents of a collection. C++ focuses a lot on iterators and ranges. So what happens when you have a Delphi-style container and you want to use it from C++? Well, I find that many people aren't aware that you can actually use a lot of C++ conventions with the Delphi style containers. And so instead, uh, they end up with a lot of code that looks like it has been Delphi ported to C++. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that uh, when you use C++, it's quite nice to sort of program using canonical C++ style. So here's some general rules of thumb for the ways that the collections are currently uh, bridged, or rather the, the support, that's both the library and, and the header emitted support uh, for the Delphi collections has in C++. So I'm going to show you all of these uh, live in practice in, in code in a moment because I think that's uh, probably a lot easier way to, to see what the behavior is rather than just reading a slide. But to cover this very quickly, these are just rules of thumb. If a type has get enumerator, if it's enumerable, then you can use range-based for loops and some of the read-only STL algorithms. If a type has the index operator, then you can use range4 and the read-only STL algorithms. Uh, one exception there is t-dictionary, which doesn't allow random access. And then the uh, system dynamic array uh, types, um, many types alias this, such as array of string and t-integer din array and t-string din array and you know, a dozen others at least is really common in, in Delphi code. Uh, they can use range-based for loops and all STL algorithms. So let's see some code actually applying SEO algorithms uh, with a Delphi container in practice. So I have a simple console application here that I wrote earlier today, and it's going to use a number of Delphi types and show you using C++ algorithms uh, with them. So right at the top of this code here, I just have a couple of lambdas uh, to print an integer and print a string. Uh, this is just going to be used when uh, as, as a function object when visiting a uh, and the contents of, of a collection. So I'm going to start with dynamic array because it's, it's common and many types of aliases of it. So I have a very simple array of integers here with five elements, and I can print those with four each. So you can see that the compilers automatically generate the begin and end iterators. Uh, so we, we have iterator support for, for the dynamic array types. And let's run that, and let's see what it looks like. You see printing array one, two, three, four, five. So what about modifying it? So random shuffle is a great uh, modifying uh, example of a, of a modifying algorithm. And this should randomize the contents of that array. Uh, so again, we, we call random shuffle here with uh, on, on the array begin and end iterators, and then we're going to print the results. Now it's printing the array after the shuffle, and you can see it is indeed in random order. What about sorting? Uh, that too is a modifying change. I'm also going to demonstrate using a range-based for loop here uh, in order to print the array after the sort, so rather than using for each as it was before, just have a range-based for loop here and to print out uh, each element. So let's have a look at what happens when we do that. So you can see it is sorted and it is printing out the, the array contents. 
So there you go, you have both uh, read-only and modifying algorithms running on the contents of a Delphi dynamic array. All right, so what about a string list? Uh, this is an example of something that has a index operator. So I create a new string list here. I put in a unique pointer because I don't have to worry about freeing it. Uh, and I create it with null pointer, uh, so there's no, no winner. And I add three elements, strings one, two, and three, and I want to print them. Now one quirk here is that it relies on non-member begin end functions. So you can't call string list uh, arrow begin. Uh, you have to call begin on string list because string list is wrapped in a unique pointer which you actually access the pointer there. So non-member begin end, um, and we're going to print the string. So let's have a look at that. And there we go, printing the string list, one, two, three. So just to show what happens here, if I try something that, that won't work, and this is an example of where um, the support is, uh, you know, runs into some of the, the limitations between uh, between the two languages. If I try and, and compile this, I'll get an error. No viable begin function available. Using random shuffle here uh, also won't work. And uh, if I compile that, I'll get an error, no matching function for call to swap, as you can see. So I'm going to quickly skip over innumerable, uh, pardon me, innumerable iterators, because uh, a string list is also innumerable, and go straight to the insertion iterators. So what happens if I have a vector of strings, and I want to copy those into the string list. So this is a great example of mixing both Delphi and C++ containers because I'm using uh, standard C++ idioms here, uh, moving data from a C++ container to a, a Delphi container. And of course, you can go the other way as well. So let's see what happens if we run and, and compile that. You should get A, B, and C at the end of the string list. We did not print the contents of that. And it is, the string list is 1, 2, 3, and when the vector is copied to the end of the string list, we get 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. So one interesting thing instead is instead of using copy, you can use copy if. And so instead of just copying all the values from the vector and appending them uh, to the string list, we're only going to copy any that match this condition uh, that they have the value C, which of course is only, only going to be one of them. Let's run that. And when the vector is copied to the string list, we get 1, 2, 3, C. So this is a lightning talk, and we're almost at the end of the time limit. So uh, we'll hand over to Q&A now. Uh, I plan to add a blog post about this and ensure that the material is in the doc wiki as well. So keep an eye on blogs.marketario.com. That is good general advice to keep an eye on that, that site because we have lots of material every week. And now over to Q&A. There was a question about uh, the, the map uh, container. So whether it was a uh, uh, like a, a type of tree, I forget the, the class name, but um, uh, the, the question asked about a, a particular type of tree in, in another project. So a, a map isn't actually a tree, it's, it's what's called a associative array. So it has key and value pairs. And so for any key, uh, you give it a value, or if, if you give it a key, then, then you ask it for the value for that key. Uh, so it associates one value with another and you use the first value as, as a lookup. And to a certain extent, an array is an example because your array element one will have something associated with it. But of course, an array is, is contiguous and, and has to be limited to, to integers. You know, if you want to associate something with value 10,000, then your array has to be 10,000 elements long. Whereas an associative array uh, just lets you associate uh, any key with, with any value. Possibly the reason uh, that uh, uh, that question included uh, the fact that it might have, have a tree inside is that an associative array or a map is almost always implemented actually using a tree inside it, but that's, that's not visible when you're using it. 
you just use it as, as a key value pair. You give it a key and, and you get a value. It's, it's very useful. You can, it's fantastic sort of general purpose data structure. You just throw stuff at it. Um, you know, you want to look something up given, given something else and then a, then a map is, is the answer. Excellent. Yeah. That's one thing I really like is that in C++, you do have those different types of data structures like that and such as well. Oh, there's a couple of questions may have come in here. Let's look. On the subject of data structures, I do want to give another shout out to the, to the Spring 4D project on Delphi, uh, which, which, I mean, it has a lot more than just containers. There's a lot more to, to the whole project, but I happen to really like the containers that the Spring 4D offers. Yeah, that's true. Uh, th and that uh, goes back to our conversation earlier about uh, language versus library. Is uh, and, and in Delphi's case, and this is something I've always loved about Delphi, is there's a huge third-party community of these libraries that are really uh, become indispensable that you really can't develop without anymore, it seems like. And that's a good example of one Spring 40. Okay. Yes, yes, that's, that's very true. There, and I, there was a, another session a few years ago that Bruno had done on C++ for Delphi. I'm trying to remember what that one was. But in that one, he talked about how you reference in an object because it's a different syntax than you do in Delphi, but it's more explicit in that you're referencing an object, you have to use colon, whether you're using referencing a, a property versus a member versus a record versus whatever. And so it's very explicit in how you're referencing things. Well, in terms of properties, we do actually support Delphi style properties in, in C++. We have an underscore underscore property keyword, uh, and that lets classes have properties just, just like C++. Yep. Not, not quite certain, sorry, what you mean by, by object property referencing. Um, you can access a property just using the, the arrow operator, for example, as, as, you, as you normally might uh, with, a, with a, a member field. Yeah. Okay, thanks again, David, for that great session. No worries. Uh, it's sort of packed a lot into a long time, so there's not much time for Q&A, but uh, I hope those links are useful. and. Uh, of course, you can follow up with me or anyone else. Or the, the there's quite a good uh, C++ builder developers group on Google Plus. Uh, the parallels the Delphi developers group as well. So you're welcome to to check those out or, or our community or anything like that to to find out more. Now I have to ask, David, you're you're over in Estonia, right? That's right. Yes. Now, are you have you switched over to Pacific Standard Time now? Because you're almost always up late. <laughs> Uh, very close, actually. I mean, it's one thirty in the morning right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, that happens when we're one of the, uh, the the risks of, of working with an American company. Yes, very much worth it. Of course, I, I'm very happy to to be part of Market Area. So, a little bit of late night working is uh, is well worth it. Well, one thing you have to be careful with is, is I, I know you're, if it's like me at all, is that you love what you do so much that it's just easy to just keep doing it forever and <laughs> never stop. And then you have to be careful about that. I, I do find that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, uh, I, I think during some of the uh, the past couple of presentations, you know, when I've been showing the IDE, people might have noticed as you know, recording on Saturday or something. Should have something better to do on Saturday. Yeah, I, I frequently so, am hiding the calendar so no one knows I'm recording at you know three o'clock in the morning on a Sunday or something like that. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, we got to go. So thank you so much, David, and it's great working with you and great for all the sessions you've submitted. Thank you. You're welcome. It's great to be here with with you too. All right. And uh, since it's one thirty, I'm going to log off. And uh, apologies to the next speakers. I, I probably won't won't watch those. But <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll rejo uh, rejoin you guys tomorrow. Fantastic. We'll talk to you tomorrow then, David.